The catapult launch on aircraft carrier is pretty violent. The aircraft has to reach over 160 miles an hour in 2 seconds. To achieve this, a combined force of aircraft's thrust and catapult's pressure has to reach a specific value. Until this moment, the aircraft is held in place by this device. It is called a holdback, and its purpose in general is to temporarily hold the aircraft and release it at a pre-calculated load, so the aircraft can accelerate rapidly and build up enough speed for safe launch. In the past, the catapult holdback system used a device called the dog bone because of its resemblance to a real one. One end of the dog bone was inserted into a receptacle in the airplane and the other end was attached to a steel rod that was attached solidly to the flight deck. The center of the metal dog bone was precision machined to a certain thickness, designed to break when a certain catapult pressure was applied. Dog bones were machined differently and color-coded for each different type of aircraft. Usually, the one end of the fitting remained in the aircraft until recovery. The plane captains then would just throw it overboard or hand it to the pilots as a souvenir. While it was a relatively simple device, it had a number of drawbacks and it was a one-time use so it had to be manufactured in great quantities, and then packaged, shipped, stored and handled on the flight deck. With the appearance of the new F-14 Tomcat in the early 70s, the Koto Aircraft Company presented its design for a new repeatable release holdback device. The design worked well and it went into service when the first two F-14 squadrons deployed on the USS Enterprise in September of 1974, and the general idea is still the basis for all holdback designs. And here's how it works in detail. There is a finger-like link on the front landing gear of the aircraft. The holdback operator in green shirt slides the housing back revealing the tongue with chamfered notches, and he places the holdback right into the link. Then he slides the housing forward securing the connection and verifies if the housing is fully covering the candy striped area. Now the holdback is locked to a link just like a jigsaw puzzle. As the aircraft moves forward, the launch bar contacts the buffer hook actuator, causing the buffer hook to be raised above the deck level. The aircraft continues at the same velocity until the holdback bar engages the buffer hook. Now let's look inside the holdback to see what's going on in detail during launch. This is a strain bar. The bar works under the Hooke's law, which says that the extension is proportional to the force. It is designed to elongate under a predetermined load to a specific length. The tongue is an integral part of this cylinder which is locked to the strain bar by this locking ring. The ring prevents relative movement of both elements. There is a strain release rod that extends actually through the center of the bar. It is pinned to the load release sleeve at one end and contacts the strain bar at the tail through an adjustable nut. So when the bar elongates, the release sleeve remains in the same place. Now, when the pilot sets military thrust, and as the catapult pressure builds up, the load on the bar increases, causing it to elongate. At the same time, all the internal components, except load release sleeve, are moving slightly forward. At a predetermined load, the load release sleeve reaches the point where it releases this small spring-loaded ring, which is now free to expand. The release sequence is now initiated 
and from now on everything happens very quickly. This transfer sleeve is now free to move forward, allowing locking ring to contract. Now the cylinder has a clear way to move forward until the fitting clears the housing. The fingers are no longer locked and the aircraft is now free to go. The holdback falls onto the deck and a collection of springs inside reset all the elements to their original position and the holdback is now ready to be used again. The resettable holdback bars are also color-coded for a specific aircraft and each type of holdbacks has its specific braking strength. Yellow for FA-18 C and D Hornet, orange for FA-18 E and F Rhino, white or grey for A-6, E-2, C-2 and EA-6B, and blue for T-45s. The service life of the holdback varies from 2000 cycles in case of yellow ones up to about 4000 cycles in case of blue ones. If for some reason the locking mechanism inside holdback fails to release, there is an overload control section located near the tank. It is designed to brake and release the aircraft when a tensile load exceeds 160% of the normal release load. That's it for today. If you like this type of presentation and would like to see more, please support this channel by leaving like or comment and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching and see you next time.